<laughs> and now I'm walking around the stadium and someone said earlier, has anything changed? And I said no, but I was probably lying because it's just photos of you pair everywhere. <laughs> That's the only time I felt like I proper delivered when people needed me and there was big moments and that was probably my favourite five game. But he sounded a bit like Mourinho, I think. So he was in the room, there's like my mum, dad, girlfriend in there and obviously they're a bit panicking and yeah. they say, and he's like, don't worry, he's like, why are you stressed? He was like, I invented this, like, this is my surgery. So, welcome back to Life of Kitman. Um, we're delighted to be joined this week by the returning superstar hero, <laughs> Harry McCurdy. Uh, we've been trying to get Harry on the pod for ages. We tried when he was in Scotland, but it was a bit of a nightmare. Obviously, him coming back makes it much easier. As always, we're going to start with his five-a-side team. So you've got some counters, here's a pen, crack on, and say the names as you write them because Gav didn't and it was difficult watch. <laughs> you want to listen to the podcast? Yeah, silent. So our keeper will start, first low move at Stevenage, Jamie Jones. Cool. Just a great guy to be honest, enjoyed being around him, really good at golf, can't putt, but... A lot of good memories Fair of him. On. So I'll go with Jamie Jones. Defence. Centre half. You can do it. Um, we'll let you do it. No, we had this discussion earlier. I've, I've seen a few of these and a lot of people cheat. I think they, I don't know, they might have passed a bib to someone when they was 15 and all of a sudden they're in a team. So <laughs> that's cheating, but I'm going to go big Byron Webster, centre half. Love it. I would have picked Frenchie, but he had one too many pops at me in a dressing room a few times. So <laughs> if I'm playing five overs, I just want Frenchie shouting at me or I would have picked him. Centre mid. I'm going to go for another one at Stevenage. King Dog. And it's, it's a tough one, actually. I was about to give him the armband, but I don't think Byron would be happy. So we'll go Painey in the middle with him. And I'll give him the arm bang because he's yeah, too little. So no one, <laughs> them two, them two would be a good scrap, but no one would fight Painy, so we'd give it Painy. Give it Painy. We're back on Kingy as well. He was so first loan at Stevenage. Yeah. Walked into the hotel. We were in the same hotel together. He's six foot five, tattoos everywhere. I think he was about forty two at the time as well. And you just didn't think we'd get on that well, but no, I loved him. He was amazing. Decent. And I still speak to him now, so. I think that's a great little, little triangle. I don't really know how to put up front, to be honest. Probably should have thought of it. <laughs> I said, have you got your five-a-side team ready? But no, I'll just do it on the spot. So Yeah, I quite like that team. I'm just thinking what we're missing. And you know what? I'll just... No striker. I'll put my mate Willow in there. <laughs> what a five-a-side team that is. I'll be honest. I, I think... If I played in that five-a-side team, I wouldn't care, win, lose or draw. It'd just be great to be around, so... Good people. Yeah, there's a few that just miss out. Go on, who? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that if I said that, that'd be enough. It's fair enough. Because if anyone's watching and they think, <laughs> me while we're not in that team, <laughs> then I can be like, well, I did say a few missed out. So few missed out. if you're fuming you're not in a team, you're one of them that's just Close. unfortunately missed out, missed yeah. Out. What about a gaffer? Gaffer. gaffer. No, that'd be me. I'm Gaffer. Your Gaffer. This is my You're team, innit? Fair enough, it's your team. That. I'm Gaffer, this is my team. Don't mind it. And a kit for your a team. Kit. To play. A kit that you've played in, or let's, be, let's just say your favourite kit. No, you know what? I think going by that team and who the manager is, we won't have a kit, innit? We won't have a kit. Turn just... up, white t shirts, that'll do. That'll do. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I like that. Go on then. Um, I'm happy with that. Obviously, we saw a lot of this this relationship happen yeah like what what when did you first meet him and when did you like go ah oh, he's all right he is i think first time i met him was we played the friendly and i would have trained but the first that memory i have is on the wednesday we had a day off yeah. after the friendly and we went to the gym was the friendly super marine yeah, yeah. people might not believe that but I, I did go to the gym on my day off and i was in there and I don't think I've done much. Was that a one-off? But um, <laughs> First of Payne and Ellis were in there, and I remember si seeing them and like saying hello, and that was about it. 
But I don't know when. Uh, I don't know, it just happened, didn't just it? Happened. You as Aggies, it just it happened. It <laughs> just happened, didn't yeah. it? It was unbelievable. I think it starts on the pitch, didn't it? Because you two were just like in sync, like all the time. And I think when you get that close in terms of playing and training, you just become mates. And I don't know, like, to be honest, I've played with people before where you've played good with them, but I don't want to see them outside of football, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. No, I just love paying these, brilliant. And top bloke, top bloke. Yeah. And Willow. Yeah, Willow. If I could change one of them, I'd change Willow. Ooh. Would you? Yeah. For I just who? don't think. I'm thinking not on the pitch kind of thing. I'm just thinking he's definitely the first to go home if we have a team night out. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm 50 50 whether he turns up or not. But who would you think for the 50 50? If he does turn up, he's worth it. So worth we'll it. keep him go in on. it. Who's the last standing then? You included. Six of you. Who's, who's staying out the latest? Oh, them two home first, them pair toe for toe, I think. Where do you come? Middle of the road. No, oh, I'm gaffer, in it, so. No, I mean like on a night out. You yeah. can eat, you're on the night out. You're on the night out. Well, yeah, that's why I've picked the team for a night out. I'm obviously going to go, innit? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But like, if they're going home first and they're staying to the end, where are you? Now, you know what? I was just joking. I think, I think we'd have a right go. <laughs> I think if that's... That's a six that goes out. We're seeing the lights coming in the club, to be honest. I'm happy with that. I agree. And an unbelievable football team. Yeah. So, excellent. Love that. There's your 5 0 team. Right. Let's get straight into it. Um, you come in on trial when we had no owner, no nothing. Um, what did you think when you first walked in? I don't know, I remember speaking to Glads about this months down the line because I think I came in on trial then about three, four days later, Glads came in. Yeah. And he said, like, obviously he didn't say it to me, but at the time he came in and he said to the lads, like, F use that. Because I think I was just loud and I was just being myself and that. And it was like, oh, he's on trial. And he couldn't get his head round that as a trialist. I just settled in from like the second I got here and been on a couple of trials before and it, I've never really shy, but I've, I've never just been myself so easily from the get-go. And I think I just straight away just settled in and, and loved it. Yeah, to be fair, as a trialist, usually you come in dead silent, sit in the corner. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been that trialist before as well, yeah. but And you just come in. Buzz, I remember your first day, I think you had a Buzz Lightyear shirt on. Yeah, I think purple it Crocs. came in a perfect <laughs> time. It was like, it was weird. It was just after COVID and... Like I'd left Villa two years before, had a year at Carlisle where I actually done well and had some good times like Byron, played with him there, yeah. but there was just a lot of stuff off the pitch and didn't really what? enjoy there. The year later I ended up at Port Vale, got unregistered from the squad earlier. I think I started one game from last game of the season at, at left back and it was like play for a contract kind of thing. <laughs> That's mad. And I, I'll be honest, if I think the summer didn't go the way that it went, then I probably would have been out of the game following that summer. Mm. I was just really, I was at a stage where, especially with COVID, no fans and stuff, I just had no real interest, was sick of football, was sick of the politics from it. And on the other case, I was struggling to get a club as well. It wasn't like yeah, fully my choice, but nothing was coming up and I'd lost a bit of the love for it. So I think if that summer wasn't the way it was, it ended up being... Like in between the, the Port Vale and signing, like coming in on trial here, it was like went to Porto with Charles, won the European Cup, England get to the final, the Euros, and it just proper gave me that spark back yeah. of like being in stadiums. Like the first time we'd been in stadiums for a while with yeah. fans and really got the love back for football. And this came last minute kind of thing. I think so the <laughs> they brought me in, but <laughs> if you not, the season of your life. Yeah, I really don't know where I've been, but it just, I don't know, everything seemed to work out. It's good. I mean, we literally like because when we saw you, we've obviously got previous to seeing you when you were playing for Carlisle. Yeah. And obviously, we had played up your end, uh, up there, and uh, Grant had just kicked you all over the pitch for the whole game. Yeah, it was a funny one that we we used to go. So I said I lived with Byron, so we used to go for dinner before the right. games, and I think we've gone out for dinner like about to leave, and I'm Richie, and I can't remember who the assistant was. Hunt, no, hunt. Yeah, yeah, so they seen us 
and I think they put two and two together and assumed that we'd been on a night out and Lyde's actually texted me the next morning saying, yeah. can't believe you went out last night and that, like, we're all disrespected, like, we're all fuming and, and they was asked you what I'd Literally just went for some pasta, I think. <laughs> and you come off, didn't you? Yeah, I came off. I'd be honest, I'd, I'd had enough. <laughs> there was one time he's kicked you, you are on the floor, and you're like, get me off. Yeah, I'd played 40, and I think he, he tried to do me twice. And then on the third one, he's proper dumb, and I was like, this ain't for me today. Like, <laughs> We ain't getting promoted. We're not going down. I'm not getting my leg broke today. And I, thought, I honestly think Grant, he was trying to break my leg. Like, yeah, he'd done he done it three was, times. He was on you that day, to be fair. He was on uh, you. He should have had four red cards. I think I got booked for moaning at the ref because he got nothing. So yeah, nothing's just, changed there. But You're yeah, always one of those players, day. though, whenever we played you, like a player that you hate playing against, but you'd want on your team. Cheers, guys. No, but like we always were like... That's good, though. Yeah, yeah. we always like oh, hate him. Yeah, hate him. I, I, I do like that. <laughs> it's and then, quite nice on Saturday to be back, and I think I'd done that bad in Scotland. Yeah. I kind of got forgotten about. And I'd get a bit of stick, but not a lot. Yeah, and then I've walked out Saturday, and there was wasn't many of them. Probably two thousand of them, <laughs> but they're all sat <laughs> at me as yeah. I'm walking to the dugout, and I'm like, miss this. It's fair to say, Cheers. Carlisle hated you though. After that, after that, when we went back there. Yeah, it's quite Obviously funny. I don't think Carlisle fans would like to know this, actually, on Friday. Yeah. Got pulled in the office about going on loan, and I said, like, who's interested? And the first team to come out of the mouth was Carlisle. <laughs> Did that reaction, started laughing, like, impossible. No, yeah. They can't want me. <laughs> that was brutal that and day where we played there. They did. They were all over you that day. It was brutal. Um, right, let's come back to Swindon, because obviously you made your debut at Scunthorpe, like your league debut. Yeah. And... Obviously, from the summer we had had, nobody knew what to expect for the season. You didn't know whether you were going to get battered, whether you were going to win, whether we were going to be good, rubbish, whatever. Yeah. And we walked out of Scunthorpe and absolutely tore them apart. I think it almost sold us dreams, didn't it? Because in the past, Scunny, tough place to go. You go to yeah. first game of the season, win 3-1, and you're like, we've got a hell of a chance. Yeah. Little did we know that Scunny, <laughs> everyone went there and won, <laughs> but... <laughs> It was no. it was quite nice to go to their first game and yeah. expecting a tough game and winning rather than going there two months down the line and they're already rock bottom. So I was gutted to miss that. I had COVID. Oh, like, I was yeah. listening listening to it on the radio. I was gutted. That drive All on got my story own. keys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that drive on my own was awful. I just drove all the way there on my own. It was rubbish. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Good trip. Scored. Yeah, you scored as well. It was nice. Yeah. I remember telling the gaffer I always score my debut, and I think everyone, ever I'd been f like up till then, I'd scored on my debut. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously not a hips. It didn't. <laughs> I think it ran out there, but yeah. I'd always scored on my debut, and it got to that like, seventy minutes, and I not played in a while. And I thought, oh, you're gonna get dragged here. <laughs> I think it was about 88, 89 minute. Yeah. Managed to nick one. No. Obviously, that was the first time we saw the famous celebration, wasn't it? Yeah, it got what? cut out a bit because I think the fans ran, so I didn't yeah. fully get to do it. But what, um, where did that celebration come from? Like <sighs> next? <laughs> do you, do you, what you, you just? <laughs> yeah, no one will ever know. No idea. You don't know? No, I know, but no one will ever know. No. Well, I think I've seen a video before that you said something yeah. about FIFA or something. That, was, that, that was a lie. That was yeah. live on television. That, that oh, was okay. a lie. Yeah, yeah. That was a lie. <laughs> We'll move swiftly <laughs> on. <laughs> but the the season was incredible, wasn't it? Like start to finish. Oh yeah, just it was I think everyone here loved it even. It's so hard to get a group. I've just had a time then when you're not in a team and it's so hard to get behind them kind of thing and yeah. and still feel a part of it and cool. I think everyone for the majority of the season did feel a part of it. Yeah. It's easy to say that. No, but from it, my side, it's but true, it just though, did it? feel like even if they weren't they <laughs> good actors because they it just felt like everyone was so together and yeah. And even like the lone boys that were in, you know, that come in that were in first half of the season and then went away and then other ones come in second half of the season, they all Yeah, everyone, everyone just bought part. into it. It was like, tough not to, like the spirit and stuff we had as a team. It was I think it helped that there was like no expectations as well. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously Not even that. I think whatever the I think if we'd managed to stay together then Yeah. With expectations, the season late would have been the same thing. It was just yeah. such a good group, and you rarely get that where so many people buy into it. Yeah. And I think fair play to the gaffer and the staff and that, and the recruitment because it worked and didn't fully work. We yeah, it was came always, up short, but it was just great to be a part of. That's the thing, though, isn't it? Like, if you have a good year and say you come playoffs 
and you've got a good squad, it's always hard to keep that squad. Like people are always going to move on. Especially yeah. if you don't go up. Like, if yeah. you go up, it's different because obviously you go up to League One and some people want to stay because like, you go up a division. But obviously lost in the playoffs and to ever, you never keep a squad really after that. Yeah, I think for, for like happiness, kind of if everyone made decisions on yeah. just pure, are you going to go into work every day and be happy? Then the squad would have been put together. It's just, I don't know, I think League Two's the bottom of the food chain kind of thing yeah. in football and yeah. people get offered more money, money etc. more it? longer contracts and sadly they're going to disappear. Yeah. Yeah, which is just a shame how it all ended, really. Like, obviously, your former club, their fans <laughs> running on the pitch, stuff like that. Obviously, yeah, it was just them battering you all game. And yeah, this still hurts now, to yeah. be honest. It's just you said, didn't you, the other day when we first saw you, just that that will always haunt you. Yeah, it's just it's just sad. I just wish that with that group of people mm -hmm. we had gone one further. So and... close. We sh we probably should have been won the first leg three nil, three one, really. Yeah, I think if I'd JD not scored a, a chance, brace in the first like, yeah. first leg, it'd be a lot harder to sleep yeah. at night. But <laughs> yeah. if I'm struggling, I just think of that and blame yeah. the defence. Before we go <laughs> fully into the Port Vale experience of the playoffs, there was something that was an incredible night of the club, which was Man City yeah. in the FA Cup. Obviously, you scored your goal. It was a great goal. <laughs> Willow's released the ball at the perfect time for you to take a touch and, and smash it in. Like, um, What are your memories of that night? Because it was just like mental. Yeah, it just thought it was just amazing, wasn't it? I think from the get go, as soon as we went out to warm up, like the atmosphere was amazing, and yeah, I don't know, just um, I think the whole atmosphere, like it's obviously they're top players and playing against them, something. But then if we could have came, it, like it's always going to sell out that kind of night. But we could have gone one, two nil down, and the fans had just had enough kind of thing. But it was yeah. just. I think, like you said, everything that happened before and like with COVID, no fans and stuff. Yeah. We was doing well in the league, we had a good result a few days before, then it was just, yeah. I don't know, everyone enjoyed it, it was just a nice night. And was that the Northampton game, the game just before? I yeah. You scored four, didn't you? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd mention yeah, that. Yeah, that was that. <laughs> I just always remember that video, obviously, you went and celebrated sort of like towards our fans and there's a guy, <laughs> the guy in a wheelchair that come towards you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, remember, I didn't see it at the time and I remember waking up the next day and getting sent it and I think I put it on my story and <laughs> like, you can't park there mate. And <laughs> I think I quickly had a phone call from yeah. the club saying yeah. you also can't post that mate so get that down. <laughs> Can I have your pen? Yeah. Cheers mate. <laughs> <laughs> just because you spent a load of that just like Willow did. Yeah. Um, Four goals. Not many people have done that here. No. Well, no, no, three people. I think a few have actually. Yeah. I, <laughs> I keep seeing it, everyone three, does Three it. people since yeah, we've Charles been... Yeah, Charles has done it. Uh, Youngie did it. Youngie did and it. you, since and we've been it. here. Yeah. yeah. So in the last five years, we've had three. Yeah. We've scored four. It's a lot of numbers, huh? What was your favourite goal from that year? Like, if you had to choose one? What, like, the best goal or, like, the favourite? My, like, my favourite was the header against Port Vale. Oh, I, 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 Just because I think I was, I was probably having one. I'd not really touched the ball. Yeah. I was playing on the right and I knew the left back quite well, like from at Port Vale and stuff. And yeah. I don't know, I just felt like it was probably getting the best out of me. I didn't really touch the ball and we just needed a spot. We was quite flat and then to score yeah. a goal like that, it's just something I'd never really do. And I actually attacked the ball, it was a good header. And yeah, both goals were good to be fair. Kind of from yeah. nothing. And the, first, the second goal was a nice goal, but it was yeah. like, what well, I'd say I'm better at that yeah. technique and like the link up with Paney. But the first one's just, I'll never score a goal like that ever again, yeah. I don't think. So. You say that's your best, yeah, favourite, yeah. Yeah, that was probably my favourite just because I was having one and then... Got the best goal you scored that year? I don't score any good ones, I'll be honest. I normally, the, probably the, there was one against Northampton, the left foot, like half volley, but... Yeah, yeah. Don't really care how they go in, to be honest. Yeah, I'll take goal, anything now. Yeah. Like, Bounce off my ear now and just snap your hand off for it. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? Oh, it has been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Um, should we do some kit questions? Yeah. As this is a kit podcast. Um, Favourite kit as a kid? I remember for Christmas one year getting, it was like Chelsea third kit, all white, and had like blue and black down the middle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. Fly emirates on the front. Yeah, yeah, like a picture of Good Johnson in it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I like that. Um, 
favourite kit that you've played in? Um, it's got to be the yellow one. Yeah, I do like the yellow one. Good memories in that. Yeah. The black one. The black one didn't go down well, but I was three for two in the black one, so yeah. I did quite like the black one. Yeah, Hartley Paul Way was a good thing. Felt like Drogba in the black kit. <laughs> you looked like him as well. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah, I was going to say you scored it. and then did your celebration. <laughs> yeah, that was another great day. <laughs> That was a good day. Um, what I want to talk about is your shin pads. Yeah. Because obviously you make your own little homemade jobbies. Yeah. Well, I actually turned up the other day, by the way, and <laughs> I've been given two little shin pads, <laughs> and it's got a photo of Jonah and I don't know if it was Lydon or Hoops. I, mean, I can work it out, but... <laughs> <laughs> good for you. And now I'm walking around the stadium, and someone said earlier, has anything changed? And I said no, but I was probably lying because it's just photos of you pair everywhere <laughs> <laughs> there's some little animated there it is there we are. no eyes and nose i don't know that is loud, isn't it? what's going on but <laughs> that's the only thing that's changed is your it? pair's boats are <laughs> everywhere apart from that nothing's changed well okay um but you're, you're shinnies <laughs> yeah back to the so, so we gave you those little ones hoping you'd wear them yeah. And then we could promote that. And then the company would send us some more stuff. I didn't. <laughs> he didn't. He made his own. But previously, there had been some dates, there had been some stars, there had been all sorts of stuff. Talk us through what that is. Well, I think I just forgot my shin pads first game of the season, to be honest. So I got the little pink foam, cut it, tape round it, made it, wore them. And then, I don't know, they, I can't remember what happened. I was probably just bored in the dressing room once and... I remember seeing you say I get a sharpie it. and I start drawing on. two little stars on them and then I think I added like the dates that we'd won it, like the European Cups and then like Drogba ended up on one and then King Kai's on the other. <laughs> and then it got to the start, I think I was just writing anything on it, like if we was going out after a game or something, it was just, I don't know, it ended up covered. Because then Saturday there was new ones again, weren't there? Yeah. And they're plain. Yeah, they're plain. So what is, is that going to become a piece of art as the season goes? I don't know to be honest. It probably depends how bored I get in the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously did it with that pair of dunks that you bought for the awards, didn't you? You got them done. No, I think I got scanned on them actually. I paid about a monkey for them. I yeah. wanted some designed and it looked like them. a six year old had done them, but. Yeah, they weren't brilliant to be Nah, fair. but they, I, I still that. got them. I, yeah. I do like them. What was your thought process like going to the awards, <laughs> like wearing what you wore? Um, <laughs> there is a story behind this. You've told us this before. Yeah, I can't remember to be honest. I think I just wanted it to look good in it. Like, Fuck it. I think it, it worked. Told, uh, Painy said. Yeah, I, f I think it, you've had Painy's side of the story yeah, where. Side of the story. I remember we we played Hartlepool on a Saturday and we had Forest Green on the Tuesday, so everyone yeah, was yeah. training. And then I uh, asked the gaffer if I could. I didn't have a suit yet, so I asked if I could have Sunday off to go get a suit. <laughs> and then um, obviously Chelsea playing at the bridge. So I was like, oh, you need to get a suit. I had no intentions of going to the game. Obviously ended up at the bridge. And then <laughs> before you know it, it's like half four. I've got no suit. I think the awards is at seven o'clock. Oh, and I ended up picking up the suit, finding some glasses and a hat. And I'd asked for the trainers a few days before. So I met the geezer with them and nice. the outfit came together. Yeah. It certainly did. Yeah. I mean, it I went, went a bit viral. To be I don't know if they did sure. best dress that night, but I think I would have won it. I think mm. you would have won it. Yeah. Definitely, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I saw the picture of everybody stood there from the team it's of the year. It's a great photo, isn't it? And you definitely were looking the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no question. Obviously, you come back the other day and you walked up with exactly the same pair of boots that you left with, three pairs. Well, yeah. well, I think one of them's new, the pink ones. But you, the ones that you obviously played against Man City and you still rocking with them. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm superstitious. I just, I do really like the boots. I've tried to get more of them yeah. and can't get any, but... And you don't wear okay. insoles? Yeah. No, nah, I've never worn insoles. I, I completely forgot about that. And earlier in training, you asked me to go and get your other boots. And I was like, there's no insoles in these. And I remembered. Like, I was yeah, like, no, just, how does that not? And you were saying know, maybe you, you, you wanted so to change your boots because they were hurting. I'm thinking, well, obviously, surely. No, nah, I, I, I do find them comfy, but I yeah. think it just pitch was a mould, not a stud. Mm. I don't know. Maybe it is a bit just putting them on good memories and stuff yeah. and trying to find something. But... They're riddled with bad memories now, to be honest. I've probably overdone it. I yeah. can't even remember scoring in them, so... No, it was good to see those boots again, to be fair. Yeah, terrible. I do like them. Yeah. Have you got any other superstitions? You got no, I don't really have any, to be honest. Though. Like, kit-wise, 
you love a big shirt and some shorts. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's super stitious. I just wouldn't like to go out there and it was tight, but yeah. I'd probably get over it. I just wouldn't feel comfortable. And your socks, you just chop them dead Yeah, short I think throughout the years they've got low. I've always worn them low and then like our youth team manager used to go mad at me and he always used to say, be different by being the best player. You can't always be the best player, so I'll just keep cutting the socks and <laughs> throughout the years right. they've just got lower and lower, I think. Uh, brilliant, because the other day you've cut them like above the Puma and the STFC, so it's literally about that much Yeah, sock. I'll be honest, no offence Puma, but the socks are really bad design this year. Yeah. Just being honest. Not happy oh, with them, though. No, no, no. <laughs> not great. Enough. Um, right, let's move to Walsall on the last day. What was that? Walsall. Walsall? Walsall? Walsall. Where's that? <laughs> Poland? <laughs> no, that's Walsall. <laughs> um, Walsall? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Go I'll on. let you say it. Walsall. I know, you carry on with the question. I just didn't know what Walsall I was Walsall away. Yeah. Obviously, we've won the game. We had to win to get into the playoffs. All the fans run on the pitch. You were You're feeling. going... Get out! Go away! We haven't achieved nothing yet. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah. I, thought, oh, I actually remember arguing with the fan that day. It just... I'll be honest, I heard Joe Cole say it once and... I think they'd got, was, the they'd got to the genius. But I think they'd got to Chelsea, maybe got to the final. And he said he felt like we was over-celebrating, get to the European Cup final, yeah. but we'd not won anything. And that kind of like, just cemented in my head kind of thing. And I don't know, I get... No, like I've been lucky growing up sporting Chelsea. I've seen us win a lot of, of course, things, yeah. and I don't know. I fully got that it was a big achievement getting to playoffs, but I just didn't really want to yeah. over celebrate. At the end of the day, we <laughs> ended up with nothing, and yeah, two years later, right. we're still in the same league. So it's I don't know. I just didn't really want to over celebrate. Right, it, yeah. and but as a game, like that was. Oh, that was it was incredible on it. I think we had like four thousand there. Yeah, there was mental. more Swindon than Warsaw and we I think it was my first touch, just I think that's my favourite goal of yours. Yeah. Personally. I like that goal. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That there was probably my my favourite <laughs> exclude the second leg. <laughs> then five games I loved them because yeah. we were struggling really. It looked yeah, like we, we was gone and I remember saying to Paney, I fancy it, like I'm coming yeah. back and I probably wasn't ready and I don't know, that was probably the only time my career I've ever had it where there was, in relatives to like where we was, there was big games for us and yeah. I've not played in many big games, if I'm being yeah. honest. And they felt like big games. In the big picture, they're probably not, but <laughs> at well, the time, up, well, at, at the time they felt like it. And I, that's the only time I felt like I proper delivered when yeah. people needed me and there was big moments. And that was probably my favourite five games I've ever had as a It started from that Hartlepool game, really. Then we went on a little run. We beat Forest Green on the Tuesday night. Yeah, well, we had to, I remember yeah. just being in the huddle and I'm not one for speaking. And in them, I probably get a bit nervous. I wish I could, but <laughs> I remember the, uh, people would do the thing and I'd just chip in with, don't let it end today. Like, yeah. if we lose today, it's done. Like, it's, you, you know that that's going to be the last time that group's ever going to be together, like yeah. loans and people will move on and stuff. And I probably knew the back of my head it was probably going to be my last year at Swindon and it was just didn't want it to end then. Like, yeah. don't let it end today. And it lasted five games and <laughs> came up short. But yeah. Even that Barrow game, we were 1-0 up and then they scored. Oof. And then we're really thinking really like... Amazing. I think it's too fair. Then, I say five games, I take that out because I missed about six sitters that day. Yeah, and then Reedy really like, saved us, didn't he? Reedy scored, didn't he? But yeah, we got that. Yeah, we got through because we were struggling a little bit and those last few games obviously got us up. No, I really enjoyed them games. Yeah. Massively. And it was like, the weather that day was class as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like, everything was just right well, that was, for that uh, day. Like, it's a really good day, yeah. Proper good day. Which led us into the playoffs. And the first leg was incredible, as we said before. Yep. Um, maybe conceding that goal is ultimately what, what did us like. I don't know, I just think it was rubbish, weren't we, to be honest? I think they, put, the they put a massive press on us right from the start, didn't they? Yeah. Like yes, like, it's weird, I can't remember anything from the game. Like, I can't remember yeah. any moments. The only thing that I half remember is Frenchie having maybe a chance. Yeah, yeah. and we should have had a penalty. But I couldn't tell you what if it was a header or if he shot. We had yeah, the, the Stonewall penalty. Yeah, handball. It's mm. done now, isn't it? Yeah, we, I'll be honest, we... Probably didn't deserve it. We got battered last 15 as first leg and then yeah. second leg. We just didn't show up yeah. at all. 
Yeah, yep. no, I agree. And then obviously the penalties. We don't really want to talk about the penalties, but yeah, I mean, we had practiced the day before because we trained, or two days before because we trained here, didn't we? Yeah. And then everyone was just banging them, goal, goal, goal. You smashed one in the goal. We're like, this is decent. And yeah, I mean, my record in penalties is horrific. I've actually never scored one. And then Have you I, not? No, never. Wow. And then I... um. I took one on Tuesday, I played a reserves game and it was against, I want to say, say, I want to say Airdrie yeah. or Air, it was one of them and I think they had the average age of 14 <laughs> and we won 5-2 <laughs> and obviously I'm in a bit of a drought at the moment and I took the penalty, two steps, keeper's gone the same way, <laughs> it's identical and I think I had the exact same reaction, it was just like a a disbelief like yeah, a laugh just because I'm just yeah. in disbelief at what's just happened and yeah. I've done it again and I'm <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll be taking another penalty ever again <laughs> but then like after that and obviously we've lost and whatever all the stuff that went on was mental with the yeah. fans on the pitch all the stuff in the dugout area and you know the tunnel and all the rest of it and it was all a bit mental. I think it's one of them when you're involved in it and it's you it's not nice but then Everyone probably watched West Brom Birmingham the other week. Yeah, was it West Brom? No, uh, West Brom Wolves. West Brom Wolves, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> how good is this? That like, football's back. So, <laughs> so no, you're right. It's not great when you're getting it in the back of the head, but <laughs> for the great, <laughs> for like, if you take yourself out of yeah, it, then. For the game, like, yeah, yeah. Show some passion and. <laughs> yeah, <a bit> of, <laughs> it's one of them. A bit too it? much. You don't want to be the one that's getting it on the head, but. Then obviously. But then when I'm sat at home watching Wolves West Brom on TV, I'm like. This is unbelievable. So. <laughs> <laughs> but then obviously we get back to the changing room and then it's just a completely different atmosphere. Like everyone was dead. Yeah, I think that like, because they'd done that reaction, you kind of forgot you was angry at that. Like, that's a disgrace and that. And you kind of forgot. Yeah. And it took about 10 minutes and I remember just thinking, oh, shit, I've just missed a pen and we're out. Yeah. Oh, God, what have I done? And then it's when it hit. You're the only one to miss. Keep that in your head. Yeah, it does feel like that, though. Um, well... But the change room was just, everyone was devastated, weren't they? Like, yeah. You know, there was a few of us, like, just going around, like, pain, he's got his arm around people. And, yeah. You know, you're just it was a tough two weeks, I'll be honest. Yeah, the only thing that cheered me up was when the actual final was on. Right. Yeah. And I kept getting tagged on Instagram by a load of Port Vale fans. <laughs> Love it. And it's probably Port Vale, unless you're, what, born in the 70s, it's probably the biggest day as a Port Vale fan that they've had in their life. Yeah, yeah. And they all went to Wembley with inflatable pigs because they thought I called them pigs on Instagram. Right. So I'm thinking, the biggest day of your life. I've been to Wembley a lot with Chelsea, <laughs> European Cup finals, everything. <laughs> Never took a pig. <laughs> and, and I think the reason they took a pig is because they think, I think I put like Vamos, or I can't remember the actual post, but it was like onto pigs. And obviously we had Port Vale next. That was after the Warsaw game. So they thought, oh, He's calling us pigs. But we used to go a gaff in London called Pigs, so I was just was just, just buzzing we're in the playoffs yeah. 3 0, like let's go out, let's go to pigs. And they all thought you were calling And then the next thing is <laughs> I think ten thousand inflatable <laughs> pigs at Wembley. So whoever <laughs> whoever sold inflatable pigs on Amazon <laughs> must have some yeah. summer because <laughs> it's the most they've ever sold but that did cheer me up a little bit to be honest well that's cheered me up that's a good story I like it um, and then obviously after all of that happens and you know you kind of get over it and then you come back for pre-season and it's a different group and there's a different manager <laughs> yeah. and it's all everything's changed <clears throat> like and then obviously the window's open and it's quite clear that there's going to be offers and you're, you know, you're going to have other options on your hands, and then obviously Hibs come in, and you go off to Scotland, which an unbelievable move on the face of it. At the time, you're thinking that's yeah, it's a good move, <coughs> and obviously it's not not really gone to plan. Yeah, it's quite. Well, I don't know the whole thing. If you're being fully honest, in May I probably didn't think I'd end up going to Scotland. Like no disrespect to Scotland whatsoever, like. I can't sit here and say a bad thing about the league when I've gone there and done nothing in it. Yeah. But I just didn't, it never like crossed my mind that I'd end up there. And it was just the way the window went. I think I had a bit of a reputation and people didn't 
saw it as a risk kind of thing and didn't want to do that and that's fine that people are entitled to their opinions kind of thing and I think you can get a bad name in football quite easily and it passes on and stories get exaggerated and you sound a lot worse and you actually are or maybe I was that bad. But I mean we, we <laughs> I always say like I don't know but you know we, <clears> we always say you've got to meet people and make your own mind up. Yeah I think I've always been tarnished as a bad egg and like I've heard the word poison thrown around and it's just not the case. Yeah, I haven't ever, ever been in a dress room like that. I've been in dress room with poisonous people and they don't care and stuff and I'm never one for not caring. And yep. I don't know, I just think I am a bit different maybe at times. So that was the way the summer went and it went right down to the wire thinking maybe two days to go I could end up staying here and you never know what I mean, there's what's going to happen kind of thing. But I went to Hibs and I was really excited about it. And then... Probably not as excited until I think I signed on the Thursday night and on the Friday went to training and I went to the stadium and went to, when I went got to the stadium that was the first time I had a proper buzz for it I was like big stadium this is a proper football club yeah. like this is this is where you're playing every week and I was so excited and I was in the mindset then where in my head deluded I think if I'd gone to Real Madrid I would have scored forty goals I just felt that wherever I was going on a football pitch I would score goals yeah. for anyone kind of thing and I don't know football's a mad thing it quickly got drummed out me I, th I think starting like since I've back here, been back here a few days people have noticed maybe a bit calmer and stuff and maybe a bit of that off the cuff like what makes me good has been slowly just drilled out of me and I don't know that was I mean, the main reason I wanted to come back here to just get it back and find that I've always been known as a maverick and finding that and finding a bit of freedom and enjoying myself make stuff happen and going away from the robot side which clearly doesn't work for me like going back to your character there's two people when they've left this club that have left us a shirt with a personalised message on it one of them's Willow both shirts are behind us to be fair mm. one of them's Willow which was his whale shirt and the other one we had no idea you were doing it was you you got your shirt, you wrote a lovely little message Yeah, we were at training, weren't we? To me and Jonah, we've come back from training and found it on the table in the kit room. You know, only two people have ever done it. So when people talk about your character, yeah. that's character, you know? That's what we said to all the lads, obviously, when you were coming back. They were like, everyone was saying, like, oh, what's he like? We've heard this, we've heard that. We're like, well, yeah, some of these stories are true, yeah, but, like... Yeah. Actually, yeah. like he, he did go to Madrid and then come back the next morning and train. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yes. But we were just but like, yeah, we, we we explained that and other little bits and bits and bobs. And yeah, stuff. I don't know. I think there's always two sides to every story. Some people I work with probably listen to me say that and be like, you're, f <laughs> you're miles off it. But I don't know. That's life in it. I think whatever industry you work in, and yeah. People you get on with, people you don't, and people think, are different. So I think it also depends how how well you get to know someone as well. Like people can make a judgment within. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that was the case that when I moved up there, I was just judged very quickly and yeah. just very quickly made to. Don't get me wrong, I was still myself around the training ground and stuff. Not as much, but I'm still live. If you ask the boys now, it's what you like. They probably all say he's <laughs> mental, but. <laughs> I don't know, more on the pitch where I had that freedom and that, that's just been lost and you can sit there and blame manager, you can blame, but I think also that's down to me just being like, nah, you need to, you need to know what you're good at and do it. I agree. So you mentioned your time off. What was the heart condition? How long did you have out? Like, where are we at with that? Yeah, what, what was it? I think it's two little tumours somewhere right. in the heart, near the heart. Okay. So serious. Uh, the word artery rings about. I'm <laughs> slowly learning a little bit more about hearts, but yeah. I've never been great at so that what, kind of so how, like, stuff. When you, so you obviously you went for your scan. Yeah, it was just a check-up scan pre-season. It was, it was actually we was playing the first pre-season game of the season. I think we had a 30-man squad and I'd missed out on it. So I'd been in training ground trained and I was going to go home. I had the weekend off and um, they was like, nah, go to the scan. I nearly didn't go, but I went to the stadium, got the scan. Yeah. And there's a lad, people probably won't know him. And he's, got him he's called Boyley and he's another character. And he was injured at the time. So us two had trained together, I'd gone and done the scan. He's watching it. He's going, what the f is that? On the 
on the machine. Yeah. Thought nothing of it, but then everyone's scan was taking five, ten minutes, and I'm there like half an hour. So I've gone to the geezer, really? like, what's going on? Like, is this all right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, fine. So I remember leaving there. I just remember calling my mum, and she was like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I've just had a heart scan. And she was like, oh, that's good that, yeah. that the club and stuff do that. I was like, yeah, it was fine though. And I got back after the game, the doc rang me up and said, go for another scan. And like, until you've had another scan, you can't do anything. So I went for another scan and then quickly said, you're gonna need surgery. And it went pretty fast from then, to be honest. I think when you live in the moment, it just all happened so fast and you're in the moment, there was no time to really process it. Just before you knew it, I was a bit of a oh, cripple yeah. for a month or two. Yeah. Um. So the operation was what, just to remove the two? Well, they thought there was one at, at first. So right. I was in Cleveland Clinic, like big, like unbelievable hospital in London. And we was in there and the surgeon was amazing. So there was two surgeons, but one of them actually invented the surgery that happens. Okay. So before like, he came around with this, it was all just open heart, like cut you open. And yeah. he invented like a keyhole surgery where you can go in through your nipple and for you groin and I don't know how he does it but he was like to my mum and dad he sounded a bit like Mourinho I think <laughs> so he was in the room there's like my mum and dad girlfriend in there and obviously they're a bit panicking and yeah of course oh we were as well and they say and he's like don't worry like why are you stressed he was like I invented this like this is my surgery like he'll be fine it's good that and he was like give me seven hours with him I'll call you up come see him he'll be fine and I think it ended up being like nine and a half hours because obviously there was two in there. So yeah. after seven hours, they're fucking thinking, what is <laughs> yeah, going on? Yeah, but happening? ended up being fine. And we had a month in hospital, three and a half weeks maybe. So it's just different that like you s see so many people that go through stuff. And yeah, cool. I was lucky that I got looked after straight away by the best people and yeah, yeah. was in a nice place, good people around me. And, and then... So what's the recovery like from that? How long has it taken you? Like, <sighs> how much have you trained? Like, it's just been very up and down. I think I had three or four viruses that once I came out of hospital, yeah. where normally it might be a little cold, where you cough once or twice, and all of a sudden, like, you're getting the same thing, and because you're so low, it's yeah. you're in bed for a week, can't really move, and even like for the first month or two after, like, little walks, you're just exhausted and that, and I think that's been the main thing, recovery. Like I've maybe been able to do one big session and it's probably about November, December I came into training right. and trained once and then I didn't turn up for two weeks after that. Like I was just in bed, I was just, just down. It's yeah. just, it just finding the balance and it's been tough and it's also tough because I don't think anyone's ever had it in football before. Yeah. Right. No one that I've ever spoke to. So yeah. physios were kind of a bit in, in the middle, not sure yeah, what to do. Really and yeah, it's been slow and like I'm far from over it kind of thing. It's still yeah. a long way to go, yeah. but I'm in the what we call the fun side of it now, where I am training. I've not trained lots, but started to complete the majority of sessions. Maybe not all of it, yeah. but and I'm back on the pitch. So yeah, and yeah. there was a conversation this morning actually with the physio about how because of where you're at, just talking about how physios aren't too sure and that we were talking about everything has to be done exactly by the book with you. It's not like a yeah. recovery where you've come from like a hamstring injury or Yeah, no, it's so different. I mean? Even it though I to be like played 20 minutes on Saturday and I wake up Monday, like today and I'm still in bits. I'm yeah. like, yeah. what's but going on? Time, but you just need to just it accept it and it's... Yeah. Could have been a lot worse. Could have never played again. Do you think it's changed the way you like look at stuff now at all? Like football-wise? Life wise. I think my whole life's changed to be honest. Yeah. The last eighteen months since I've left I've definitely matured a little bit. Yeah, so we actually had when we got to the hotel the other day, before Newport, we actually had like a four, like a good half an hour, forty minute chat with you and it's probably one of the first chats we've had where it was like slightly mature. Yeah, just I mean? actual <laughs> chat. Yeah, like Mildy was saying it today, he's like, You're boring me now, like I want the old <laughs> Harry back and I it, obviously it'll come out in times and then I don't know, I don't think I actually moaned at the ref that much on Saturday, whether that comes back or not, I'm not sure, stuff like that, but I don't know, that's kind of what I miss a bit. I'm Like, I really like my life at the moment, yeah. and yeah. I'm settled, and I do feel more mature and more Definitely. in control kind of thing, yeah. and just, if I can find a balance and get a little bit of that spark yeah. back then. I think this is probably the best place for you to do it, to be honest. 
yeah, it's probably the only place I would have came back on loan. Cause yeah. I didn't really I think I was ready, to be honest. But it, it didn't feel fair to other clubs for me to go there in an environment I didn't know. It didn't feel fair on them or me kind yeah. of thing. I just yeah. didn't think I was ready. And here I think I've got a pit in the bank with the fans and yeah. I know staff here and they'll look after me. And yeah. so hopefully we can, won't take too long and we're back on track. Yeah. So deadline day then. So we didn't know. We did. I messaged you, you aired me. Same here. Um, <laughs> I thought it'd be more dramatic, <laughs> innit? Yeah. And then I was like, what's going on here then? Because I see these tweets and I'm thinking, that can't be right. Yeah. That can't be true. And then probably about an hour before it happens, I get a phone call from someone at the club saying, keep it to yourself, but it's happening. And I was like... I couldn't believe wow. it. It's you the most. Rang him straight away. It's I'm like, you'll never guess what I'm just I, To be fair, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't sleep. Like, it was the maddest thing. Like, some like never seen that coming at all. Yeah, neither did I. To be honest, I've had a conversation a week before with my agent and in the club, and it just seemed like the best thing to stick around. Yeah. And I knew that opportunities would be limited, if if any, but. I just didn't feel like I was ready to go somewhere and yeah. be thrown straight in kind of thing. And I, it was like, I was, I was proper torn apart of me, wanted to go and play and get minutes. But other half of me was like, yeah. I just really don't, I think you know yourself in your own body. And I just didn't think I was ready kind of thing. And I don't know, I've, I left England on a high, then you go to Scotland and it's been the complete opposite. Yeah. But that's kind of like, well, you've done it in England, not in Scotland. And now it's going back to England. It's like, there's no excuses. Like the club was saying we can speak to clubs and tell them. And I was like, yeah, that's great. But no one cares. Like, yeah. I'll be honest, I don't, I don't think anyone cares. Care if them, it man. wasn't me, I wouldn't care. Yeah. I think that's just football. Yeah. And Would you, you say it's to... the most torn decision you've had to make? <laughs> yeah, I don't normally ever like have to think about anything. Mm -hmm. I know what I want to do. And I've always just done that and then dealt with the consequences yeah. if it was the wrong thing. It's the only thing I was proper torn about and I think in the end you, you want to play football and I, I thought this was the only club I can come and I've got time, of not unlimited time, I don't want yeah. to come and take the piss kind of thing. I think people here know that I won't do that but it's going to take a little bit of time to yeah. get back to the levels that I know I can get back to and, well, that's and I just need to be playing football. I didn't yeah. want to spend two years without playing football. Mm -hmm. and it's a long time in such a short, short career, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it, I said, only two things that proper haunt me in football is well, not proper haunt me. That one's the Port Vale penalty where I'm gutted about, but the other one is like going to Hibs and how it's gone. And yeah. I think a lot of people over there think I don't care and think I've come up here and think it's going to be easy. And I'm not going. I'm not sitting back now and saying it's the hardest league in the world or it's impossible to score. It's just little moments didn't go my way. I mm. think I was managed really badly and. Yeah not given opportunities and there's also a lot of things I could sit here and blame myself or maybe yeah. didn't do this right and do this but yeah I'd love to I'd love to be here now for 15 games and get 10 goals and get back fit yeah. and, and go back to Hibs and have one yeah. proper go at it and yeah. you never know if what's going to happen yeah, if you're going to get that opportunity great. or not but well let's hope it works if I had a dream parties. scenario that would be the way that it went yeah. that I could have a nice send off here and score some goals and see. I think it's been a tough for the club last few months or yeah. however long it's been. So if we can have some excitement for the fans here and yeah. it'd be perfect for, for both of us. Both yeah. parties, yeah. Yeah, right. Shall we? It's been an unbelievable chat, by the way. The way. <laughs> it actually has blown my mind. Um, Shall we go on to the quiz? Yeah. It's you two against each other. And because this has been. Such what do you mean, you, me VM? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'll be quiz master. Um, because it's been such an epic episode and such a big episode, it's going to be a very short quiz, right? What we're going to do, we're going to do my favourite, which is start an 11. And you'll take turns to guess a player that played in Walsall or Warsaw or Walsall against Swindon. We're going to the Polish war here or the, <laughs> for the last game of the season. We're talking about the last game of the season. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll let Harry go first. Yeah. So what have I got to do? So you've got to name a player that played in that game? Yeah, I did. We know you did. So can I say that? You can say you. Yeah, yeah. I'll say me. And yeah. then Jonah will have a go. Yeah. And you've got two lives, so you can get one wrong and then we carry on. But when you get a second one wrong, you're out and the other person wins. Yeah. All right, we ready? Yeah. Go. 
Yeah, me. Harvey McCurley. Uh, Wardy. Wardy played. Payne. Payne played. Frenchy. Frenchy played. LB. Louis Barry played. Ellis. Ellis played. JD. JD played. Manny. Manny Egbo played. Reedy. Reedy played. Willow. Willow played. Right, so. That's a team, isn't it? That's a team. Now let's go to the bench. Who's on the duty? Yeah, who's on the duty? <laughs> Glads. Glads was on the bench. Uh, Jojo. Jojo was on the oh, bench. Oh, nice, geez. I was going to say Jojo. Um, this is good because there's going to be a couple here that you Who's on the duty? <sighs> Try to think if anyone ever missed out. I go Easty. No one can leave Easty out. No. Really? Really? No. Wasn't, East... wasn't involved. I'm going to call Garner after this. <laughs> it's impossible involved. you can leave Easty out. Go on, Jonah. Rick. He's lost a lot. Slick Rick. Slick Rick. Ricky Aguiar was on the bench. Go on. I just said how good of a good. Oh, uh, AK. AK was on the bench. That's Aki Nodemayo for people that don't know who's called AK. Struggling here. It's tough, isn't it? Mo? Impossible. No. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. He's always on the bench. What do you mean he's always on the bench? He came on against Man City. You did come on against Man City. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Go on. Um, can I ask a question? Go on. How many people are on the duty? Uh, seven. Seven. So we've got Jojo, AK. Jojo, AK. Glads. Glads Ricky. So there's two more. Three, three more. Can't count. Um, oh. Who, who's played centre off? What, in that game? Yeah. Dion and Frenchy. So Jake was on a duty? Yeah, Jake O'Brien was on the bench. Yeah. Jaden. Jaden Mitchell Lawson was oh, on the I'm, bench. I was oh. thinking, but I didn't know. How many is left then? There's one left. So there's one more. There's one one more on a duty. I'm trying to think of the subs that used to happen. So. <laughs> now. I can't think. Coops had gone back, innit? Coops yeah. has done. Coops has done. What a lad, by Oh! Way. I know, was he injured? JT was injured, wasn't he? JT was injured. That's not your guess, is it? No, no, no. Um, fuck me, I feel bad. I really can't think who it was. Should pass it over to Jonah and see yeah, if Yeah, pass it, it over. You win. If you can't get it, we carry on because you've only lost one life and then Jonah will have lost a life. I'm what struggling to think it. I have no if idea. If I give you the answer, you've won. Should, should we know it? Oh my God, is it Honey? No, he was injured. Oh. No. It, it, should we, should we know it? Probably. He was on the bench most games. <laughs> what? Didn't play very much, but was on the bench most games. Didn't play very much? No. I can't. He was always there. I feel terrible. It's all right. Go on. I'm sure I'll get over it. Harry Parsons. Oh, <laughs> HP. That's my Sorry, HP. Better. He's all right. Sorry, good HP. <laughs> good lad. Good lad. Well, there you go. Uh, I think Jonah wins that, doesn't he, Matt? Yeah, you, you can he's win He's got that. about six wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I was got two lives. I, I'd forgot, to be honest, Geese. I got... Well, only that last one. Nah, I'll no, I'll give you that, Geese. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. gone, man. I forgot. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Jonah wins the quiz. That's the whole quiz this time. Love that. It's purely... <laughs> And, purely he, purely and he has to go at me about my quiz every well, week. Well, it was a good quiz though, wasn't it? <laughs> that got you both thinking. No? And well, we you said starting 11, to be honest. That was <laughs> like... <laughs> the starting 11 bit was. Well, just because just you two knew it. And yeah. then you go to the bench and then that's when it becomes interesting. We yeah. just spoke about how good a day it was, so, so we ain't going to forget. Yeah. <laughs> Next day of his life. I forgot Harry Parsons, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, I do you feel said bad. no? <laughs> I do feel bad about HP, actually, to oh. be fair. Unbelievable. Um, just before we run away, um, I just want to say a huge thank you to our sponsors who help us all the time. We got in for free with our first. Who are the sponsors, Keys? In for free. Yeah. They are like they a do? recruitment company. Nice. So they're they're, they're yeah. all right, good guys. They come in and watch every now and then. They wanted to come and watch this one, but yeah. I figured your language might, you know, kill the child that comes with them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and I wanted to look after you. So Cheers, Keys. So we didn't invite them. Um, We've also got Mad Mash Media. 
Matt, who comes and makes this look professional. And we've got Tithe Grove that sponsor the quiz that we've just done. Uh, so thanks to all those guys. Who sponsors the quiz? What do they do? Tithe Grove. What are they? They're a groundswork company. It's a groundswork company, company, yeah. Yeah. Where is it from? <laughs> Jonah's uncle works from. Yeah, nice. So Get yourself down there. Yeah, yeah. go and do some groundwork, Jonah. <laughs> And a bit on the side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks to those guys. Thanks to, to Harry for coming in because, you know, he could have easily said no. I could have. No, I had no choice, to no be choice. honest. <laughs> <laughs> he had no choice, let's be honest. He said, he said yes when he was in Scotland and knew it was yeah. never going to happen. <laughs> and then he walked back in and we were like, come on, H, let's go. <laughs> but no, brilliant. Um, cheers for your time, guys. And we'll see you next week for another episode of Life of a Kitma. Cheers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs>